now. <coughs> so good morning, my troopers. Thank you so much for showing up on a snowy Monday morning. I commend you all. My name's Gina. Uh, I work for WFG National Title. I'm a sales rep, so I'm in sales like you guys. Uh, I have the luxury of having Lisa work with me. She's our marketing and technology director. She got this class CE certified for cybersecurity, which is so important these days, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to turn you over to her and let her go for now, and um, it'll be a great class. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. I echo that. Troopers. <laughs> Monday snow. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Double duty. Um, so yes, thank you for being here. So my name's Lisa, as Gina mentioned. I am the Marketing Technology Director with West, which is a sister company to WFG Title. And so we really focus, I tend to focus more on the marketing side of things, the digital marketing. Um, you know, we act as consultants and teachers. And so cybersecurity was something that I, um, was a little bit on the, the new kind of edge for me. I, am, I have a long background in real estate marketing, like 14 years, but on the title side, I just joined WFG like a little over a year ago, and so the whole like cybersecurity title, wire fraud, like all of this stuff was really new to me, and um, it was it was really crazy the stuff that we've learned. So I commend you guys for being here. There's going to be a very short quiz at the end, literally because of CE credit, but um, hopefully you'll get a lot of information out of this. We're slated to go for two hours. It'll probably be more like an hour and a half or so, but please like this is for you. So stop me, interrupt me, ask questions. We can kind of dialogue whatever. You you need okay um, so first and foremost let me make sure I'm good here okay so why should cybersecurity matter this is like the sexiest topic you know? <laughs> 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 I was like I thought you guys are so stoked to be here right now <laughs> I'm like cybersecurity if you're like oh, you shudder a little on the inside that's kind of how I felt um, but you know, as a realtor, you really are the key to to your clients and keeping them secure. And uh, you know, as a real estate agent, quite honestly, like you guys know better than everyone that that your reputation is it's everything. You know, referral business is often the bread and butter. Trust is of utmost importance in our business. And with cybersecurity. You know, these little things that happen can breach trust into creating this huge impact on our clients. And and so what I mean by that is this, basically. What we have seen on the title side is that if your email gets hacked, you could potentially be not only putting yourself at risk, but your clients at risk as well. Um, is anyone, I, I just wanted to ask, feel free to volunteer the information or you don't have to. Has anyone ever been a victim of anything, whether it's like social engineering or, you know, somebody hacked, you get your debit card compromised, yes. anything mm -hmm. like that, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to, quick show of hands. Like, look at how common this is, you guys. And what's crazy is because real estate transactions have so much money involved, they're being heavily targeted by cyber criminals. And so, you know, this is this is what's scary about it, right? Is like these little things, typically, I'll, I'll kind of tell you how it happens, but basically your email gets hacked and then the clients get compromised and, and it's really scary. So what typically happens is that because uh, these cyber criminals, especially in the real estate transaction, so we've had our debit cards compromised. I'm going to share with you how to protect yourself and some different ways to do that. But specifically as it relates to real estate in a real estate transaction, what usually happens is cyber criminals will have these like scripts that run. They're kind of they're searching. They have these fillers out looking for specific words like target phrases that happen. And when they do, it's like ding ding ding, and they essentially will start monitoring these conversations that happen over and over again in, in the transaction between the realtor, the title, you know, lender, and they basically look for little opportunities to insert themselves in the conversation, posing as one of the players in the transaction. And then that's where, you know, it, it the wire fraud happens. So I want to, um, so basically what happens is, you know, your client's money can get hijacked in the process. Does anybody know anyone who's been a victim of wire fraud? Yeah? Yeah, so we had, I was representing the seller. We had a buyer who was a first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. She saved up $130,000 over the years to buy her first house. About two days before closing, I get a call from the other real estate agent. Um, she was crying when she called me. 
what happened was the just like you're saying, they had monitored emails. They sent her an email from the title, looked like it was coming from the title company, used the title company's logo, um, and told her where to wire money. The email she had got right before that was from her realtor, realtor where she signed off her wire fraud disclosure. <gasps> then turned around and wired one hundred and thirty thousand oh. dollars to a fraudulent oh. account. Uh, fortunately, uh, you know <clears throat> these things sometimes work out. They were able to recover one hundred and fifteen thousand of it wow. back, cool. but um, but she did lose fifteen thousand dollars in the deal. Uh, okay, but, oh my and gosh. it worked exactly like you said, and that's what they realized was. Um, they had been monitoring her mortgage company had been hacked. Her mortgage, okay. And they oh. had um, the mortgage company. Had been so hacked. they had been wiring the email. They had been monitoring emails between her and her lender, and then um, and then okay. the title company was in there as well. So yeah, yeah. Oh, it's oh. just the most heartbreaking thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad she was. I, I mean, you know, worse things. Fifteen grand losing that is terrible, but like hundred and thirty grand. Yeah. Can you imagine? <coughs> so, so yes, yeah, so that, I mean, that, sadly, thank you for sharing that, the, an illustration, literally, from what we've seen, pretty much exactly to the T how it tends to happen. So, I want to share with you guys, so, similar story, right, um, the Cole family was a family that was closing with a WFG, um, young family, you can see two little kids here, they were um, buying a home, it was uh, December, shortly before Christmas, last year. <coughs> And they were the victims of wire fraud. And I want to share a video with you. And it talks about basically what their story is and kind of how WFG was right in the middle of it, you know. But we were able to find kind of a win win solution. But what I like about the video is it kind of shows you how it happened, what to look for. And it just puts a human element because I think at the end of the day, we hear about this, you know, wire fraud, wire fraud. And it's like, we never think it's going to happen to us or our clients. So that's kind of the problem. It's sort of this big nebulous out there kind of thing, but but it really does happen so much more than we realize. And so, oops, this is what I need to do. Give me one second. Paul showed me how to get over here. Um, <laughs> it's all on time. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. We've been, <laughs> we've been hacked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I have bad luck with the other guy. Do you go. need me to grab Paul? Yeah, he's the man. Here, it should be. There we go. I don't know how to get this part down. I saw you on the phone that I'd already taken care of that about a week ago. See the little X? The X in the lower left. Set with himself 
that that he fell victim to this he was upset with us because he thought well why didn't you protect me if i put myself in our shoes it's look at the big signature line with the big flashing red exclamation point and this disclosure but i live this every day i i'm fully aware of it he's not you know aaron cole and his family that they're a victim of a crime mine was actually less than what they get on average when they get somebody that's insane can you imagine if you had a hundred and thirty thousand dollars in cash sitting in your hand and you know someone walked off with it and stuff you spend your entire life trying to save to be able to buy a house or send your kids to school when we sat down and looked at our options what we really realized is there was a a chance for us to help aaron and his family and at the same time be able to help so many other families from going through what what he went through wire fraud has been happening in our industry you know for years we've all been trying to figure it out and yet we're the first company putting a, a face and a cautionary tale to it um, by hiring you know one of the victims as a spokesperson when uh, justin uh, confronted me with this idea I was not just excited. I thought, wow, this is this is genius because this really helps this young man and his family. Also helps us equally. WFG called and offered me a, a different idea of a way to try and make this whole and work together. And instead of pointing fingers at each other, we try and get this resolved, get us in the house in time for Christmas, and try and help some other people. We're trying to get this message to resonate with people, not just be a theoretical problem. And they've asked, what could they have done to have gotten me to read it? And it's like, I don't think you could honestly make the letters any bigger. I, th I don't think there's a brighter color than the red you use. And it's right at the beginning. It's huge. But the signature line's way down here, so you just like scroll. Just get down there and sign it. It's like I never even saw it. What generally happens is someone's email account has been compromised. Typically, it's a free email account, Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, whatever it is. So they're looking at your emails for a long time. There's scripts that will look at every email that comes into that email account, and they will key on keywords, transaction, closing. And then it will notify them that, hey, an email about this came up. And then they start seeing you know, the transaction, and they say, well, who are all the parties? I'd sent probably 150 emails back and forth. And then I get another one, and it looks exactly the same as what I've been doing. It looks like it comes from the same place. Uh, the only difference is they changed the email address slightly, so you, you can't tell. You know, they actually put the real phone numbers of the people that they were impersonating at the title company in their signatures, of course. So if I had picked up the phone and called the number for the lady that they were impersonating, she would have known instantly that she had said that. This is a social engineering attack, right? It's a sudden change. Uh, it's a sense of urgency, and there's a consequence. And if you have those three things together, you should stop. The fact that we did get this fixed, I mean, is miraculous because there are so many people who don't. You know, we're not the only ones who have kids and who have worked hard for this stuff their entire lives, you know, and to actually have lost that money and have it be gone, I, I cannot imagine what I would be feeling like right now. So. When it comes down to doing anything serious, like moving money, go see someone in person, go pick up the phone, you just have to slow down and make sure that you know what you're doing is what you want to do. Suggest how do you handle this with your clients? 
You know, one of the things I do, and it's funny because he mentioned that, and I think you alluded to it too, but, um, you know, so often we just sort of get hung up on, we, we shoot out contracts for the clients to sign. But from the beginning, and maybe some of it's my law enforcement background, but the one thing that I always insist on meeting face to face with every client mm -hmm. is I sit down and we talk over the disclosure and then I email it to them because I don't want them to just, oh, here's another form, click, click. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so we do that, but then I also, when we're approaching closing time, we're making sure that the client knows the person from the title company has phone con you know, contact information and any emails that come, I say, if it has anything to do with money, you call that person and verify what you're supposed to do. Excellent. So, so yeah. good. So good. Huge. Huge. Yes. I think education, just having that conversation <coughs> with your client so they know what to expect, right? If it has anything to do with money. Do not click the link. Do not send it over mm -hmm. email. Mm -hmm. call, call and talk to yeah. somebody. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, in my closings, I, on top of what he's saying, is I say, you know, bring a piece of paper with your instructions. I don't want anything spoken over the phone. I don't want any clearly anything done online. I said, bring me a piece of paper with like with your wiring right. instructions and your account. And I said, and if you're, you know. You know, funky about that right now. I mean, most of my clients, obviously, all of our clients are regulars, except for some that might be coming in from out of state. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm old fashioned. I want to see it, and I want to electronically have a copy, and I want to physically have a copy. Yeah. And just to I make sure that. until it's over, then we can upload it. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. Until know, that from, time. Until that time, just, just. Hand it, hand it face to face, face to face, not online. I love that. And element still, you're you're guiding them, you're educating them, like what to do. Like don't do this. Let's do it this way. Well, because and I think every every thing today is very like just you know click and send, click and send. You know shopping this that. I mean we've had our visa changed probably five times in the last mm -hmm. three years. You know, mm -hmm. and because my kids have it, and you know, they and and any and I also tell them, and it's it makes it easy, but it also makes it risky. You know, you'll get a thing like Google will say, should we save this credit card for future payments? Mm -hmm. no. 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 Do you want to auto pay? Right. No. no. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. it's just it's so easy, but it's just it's too risky. Too you know? risky. The I price mean, of convenience. And I think you're right. It's, it's also I'm, I'm the training. People have <laughs> that, please do no, it's, it's Sharon. Sharon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, people are so comfortable just clicking links, right? So it's 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 almost like you have to really teach them and have those conversations because I think that that's that's, that's, that's easy to do, right? So yeah, anyone want to share anything else? And then we'll move on. Go ahead. I actually, if they're local, I have them go in and pick it up. I know with my own house, I did that because mm -hmm. I was so scared. Yeah. you know, of, mm -hmm. of wire fraud. And I kind of make it like, oh, we're going to go in, we're going to meet our closer, I'll show you where the title company is, where we're having our closing. So I kind of just love it. More mm -hmm. like, like, and then yeah. Yeah. yeah, like let's just, let's do this. Making them feel comfortable with the process right. of the closing company. If they're that. local. If they're local. If so. they're local. Well, I love that. I think all of these are, are, you know, huge. And I love the idea of just sharing with each other. So I, I'll kind of share with you too. I think another thing is know the options from your title company too like what how do they distribute wire instructions like i'll share what we do at wfg just to kind of give you a sense but like definitely know this stuff too and again just because education is where it starts like let your clients know and if you have a specific process you prefer they go through great if you want to you know give them a couple options great like here's you know first things first as you all know like your, your title company is never going to send wire instructions through email. So any way you can communicate that to your client, you're the trusted advisor, right? Let them know. Let's not leave it to like email communication to make that happen. So a couple different things you could do, Carrie, you're right. <laughs> like go, go in person. You can go to the title company. Um, we will hand you the printed, you know, wire instructions. You can meet people. You can understand what that looks like. So in person is probably one of the best ways I would suggest. Um, also for us, if they are going to go online, there's there's a secure environment. We call it. It's called My Home. It's essentially when someone goes through a transaction at WFG, they can create this account. It's a secure environment. But we say it's kind of like the Uber of 
you know, the Uber of the transaction because it lets them know where they're at in the process and it kind of gives them, you know, directions to closing and there's a document section and in that document section is where they can access their wire instructions. And so for that one, you have to, you know, there's there's registration that's required. Um, the other thing is there's a, a wire instructions dashboard with WFG. So again, you would go to wfgmyhome.com slash wire instructions. Again, it's a secure environment because they have to enter specific information, you know, the escrow number, like different, um, there's no registration necessary, but they have to prove their identity in order to be able to access them there. So if you are gonna go online, that's, that's the way we would do it digitally, never through email, but always like in person, I think is a great, great, great way to go. Um, or calling, calling somebody and talking to the number that you know, from previous, not in an email that comes to you telling you where to send money. Okay, so so the point I want to make today too, and I want to kind of go into some of these things, and this is not something to fear, but just be smart. I just think the awareness is power, and because you guys are, you know, you are that trusted advisor, so we want to empower you to empower your client. Um, so. What I want to talk about too is, um, you know, how are we individually compromised, right? Because that's typically how the way in for those hackers. And so I want to talk about, first of all, how do these typically break in, again, so we're aware, and then really give you some ways to protect yourself. These ways are not hard either, you guys. It's just taking a little bit, it's being mindful and taking a few extra steps. So how do hackers break in? Um, first, oftentimes what happens is malware gets downloaded on your computer. So malware is just short for malice, malicious software. So imagine you're going to a website, you know, you click a link, and you're like, oh, that's not what I meant to do. You go back, boom, it's too late. The malware is already on your computer. So many people have malware on their computers these days, and they have no idea that they do. So I recommend you do a malware scan, and I'll give you an example in some place where you can do it for free. So you just want to scan your computer. They, there's tons of free scans out there. There's some great ones. Just scan it regularly. If it's monthly, if you just need to set yourself a little reminder on your phone to do your quick you know, malware scan, it's worth it because with all of the digital surfing that we do day in and day, out, day, in and day out, it's just easy to download malicious software onto your computer. So that's the first one. So once they, they're on your computer, then they can spy on you. Um, does any, do you guys know what phishing is? Has everyone heard of phishing? I've heard of it, I don't understand it. Okay, cool, we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> so essentially think about, it literally is like phishing. Like they are throwing out some uh, questions, like asking questions, and you are giving them information. So phishing emails, for example, are often emails where people are asking for, you know, they may be posing as something asking for your uh, email address or your password or password or some personal information. Maybe it's a, um, you know, something identifying about you. Maybe it's a bank account number. Or maybe it's whatever. So they're phishing for information, and they look really legit. Typically, these emails look very official, and then you give them the information that they're asking for, and then they've got access to it, and then they can do stuff with it, right? Think uh, about how many times your phone rings and they say, "This is your credit card company." Oh yeah, yeah. yes. So I've phishing. gotten more calls. They're just phishing. You have. This is the Social Security Administration. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I yes. And I'm so like, obvious. yeah, fishy. I'm like, really? really? But like, that's what's so, it's like my grandmother has gotten that call before, like mm -hmm. my mom. My mom called me like terrified because she thought she was like in trouble with the IRS. <laughs> 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 she was like, no, don't give them any information. <laughs> you know, like, but that's the thing. So that's like social engineering tactics too. And that's typically where they're, they're playing on fear. They're pushing you. Like, you need to give me this information now. It's super urgent. So, so yeah, if you feel like people are asking for personal information and they're making it sound really scary, like if you don't do it now, you're gonna get in big trouble, be suspicious, don't give them any information. Um, mass theft, this is another form of the way that hack hackers break in. Not that you guys would do this, but I have been known to use the same password over and over again in multiple accounts. Mm -hmm. um, and now I try not to do that as much <laughs> because of things like this. So mass theft is where um, hackers will go through, they have this software where they can basically start, um, they can access like and try to break your passcode, right? And now an, a typical eight character passcode can, they just try and try and try these different combinations and it can typically be hacked in less than two seconds. 
So they can do like a, a trillion tries per second. So it's like it's if your pass if your password isn't really secure, they're cracking it immediately. And then what they can do is they can say, okay, where else was this username and password used? And if you have used the same username and password in your banking account, your retirement account, your whatever, then now they have access to all of that information. So that's one of the reasons why we're going to talk about using different passwords and some ways to make that easier for you. I can never remember them though. That's the problem. I know. Me neither. I don't want to write them down because it's in paper. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that's where yeah. like we that's would suggest awesome. a password manager and I'll talk about that but that's where it's something where you have like one password that you have to remember. One of those uh, password managers is actually called one password <laughs> um, and then they do the encrypting for you they can help you create strong passwords and so we'll talk about it more but yeah because the idea is you can't remember all your passwords especially when you're making them like 32 character secure passwords right. <laughs> you know we, our minds aren't meant to, to work that way so there's some things that can help um, Wi-Fi traffic monitoring so has anybody in here ever walked into their local Starbucks or the coffee shop and just went ahead and said, yes, I want to use the free Wi-Fi in here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No yeah. I don't suggest doing that if you can help it. Mm -hmm. um, if you can use, like I have a jetpack or if you can use your phone hotspot, some sort of a private network, that's the way to go. Only because people can actually buy software now that will basically give them access to whatever you're typing in your computer onto these these free big public networks so they're very unsecure so definitely if you're doing stuff with you know with work with finances all that kind of stuff don't use free public wi-fi to do that um phishing attack tab nabbing tab nabbing is basically where they send you to a, a website where it appears to be you know, uh, legit, then they're capturing information, and then once they capture that information and nabbed it, so to speak, they'll, they'll send you onto the, the real website, but your information has already been compromised. Um, key loggers, this is where it's a malware that will get downloaded to your computer, and then basically any um, typing that you do, your keystrokes are being tracked. So again, if you're typing a password into an account, it's saving all of that, it's logging it, and then that, the hacker gets it. So as you guys can see, not to spread fear, but there's a lot of different ways that people can hack you, but you have no idea. When I had heard the one about the um, Wi-Fi traffic monitoring, like airports, coffee shops, I was like, oh crap, like I didn't, I didn't know that, you know what I mean? So there's lots of different things that they can do. So just be aware of that. Brute force attack is the last one. This is where basically, <laughs> this one I don't understand as much. It's like they buy stuff on the dark web and there's all these little software um, multiple platforms that are really just trying to hack, crack your passwords. They're guessing it because they have all kinds of resources, essentially, like a, a brute force. It's like a um, uh, just a bunch of resources working for it. Um, and if you've used multiple passwords in multiple places, it's essentially just another way where they're going to access all, all of your data from, from different accounts. So those are the things to be aware of. Um, so can I answer questions? Yes, of course. How does this work on our phones? So your phones, it's a little bit different. I've heard basically people can still access your phones. There used to be kind of a common myth that like with iPhones or like Macs that you're totally pr protected from viruses and from other malware, but it's not the case anymore. So still, if you're using like free Wi-Fi on your phone, it's something that you <coughs> really need to be careful about. Yeah. If you're sending emails through your phone, but it's still through like a free, like a Gmail account or a Comcast account or, or like a Gmail account or like a Hotmail account or something like that, still, it still applies. It's a device, but th it's the account that's been hacked. If that makes sense. I've been told too that, you know, when you hook up to Wi-Fi on an airplane, that anybody else on that plane could also get into your stuff. Yeah. Anytime it's a free public Wi-Fi, like be suspicious be very suspicious. Not to mention the fact that there are third parties that are buying that big data when you are, you know, when you have to log into the free Wi-Fi and you have to give them your email address or whatever and opt in to say like, yes, I consent to this and nobody reads the free fine print. Usually they're selling your information as well. So, you know, doubly. Like I, um, I have this handy little jetpack I can show you. Does anybody else use? Oh, what is it's something that we, um, it's, a, it's an added expense, but you know, it's a business expense. 
Um, so we get it through, my work fund is through Verizon. So this is like, it's like having a little mobile hotspot that I get to carry with me. So I just log into it like a Wi-Fi. It'll show up, you turn it on, and it shows up as one of your Wi-Fi options, but it's secure. There's a password that you mm. have access to, so not everybody can access it. They can't access your stuff. How much um, is that? Uh, so it's through Verizon, yeah. Yeah. Never, and then it's like having an extra line. <laughs> is, that, is that different from having the mobile hotspot? No, that's what I was going to say. If you don't want to do an extra um, expense, you can also just use your mobile hotspot. Do you guys know how to do that? Mm -hmm. No. Can you show? Yeah, me? I'll show you. So basically, you're under settings. Mm -hmm. Hold on. You you have okay. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking while you're there. Okay. Auto so, join hotspot. Okay, there you go. Oh, personal hotspot. You have a personal oh. hotspot setting, right? Okay. So um, this is where you can turn on your personal hotspot. But you have to have that, that box with you? No. No, no, no. no this is separate. So pretend I don't even have this. What does that mean, though? Like, yeah, it's, 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 it's using, it's doing, it's doing the same thing. It's using so your you phone as your hotspot. On, that Do you have to pay for that, though? Is that? No. Well, so no. go, go it's part of your plan. So you see the. Yeah. It's part of your plan. So you can now be away with your laptop. Log on to the internet. So yeah. So it's this Wi-Fi password. So I just click on it. Turn it on. So you can use that password to create your own. Okay. For your. Right. Okay. okay. I pay for data. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So basically, that's so always what it's it may not be here. super fast, but not that public Wi Fi is not know. fast anyway. Yeah, so definitely, you can use that. And just as long as it's on, you'll see it show up. So if it's got like a name, um, you'll see it show up as, okay. as the different Wi Fi options. So Thank just select you. that. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Good. Good. More secure. Okay. So here are some other things that I just want to share with you guys, just in terms of some different some different things okay, to think about to be able to to protect yourself. Okay. First, I know it probably stinks to hear this, especially as real estate agents. But probably the biggest suggestion I could say is just slow down, right? I there are things that we could much more easily catch. If we weren't just rushing through and just you know quickly trying to get things done and like you know check all ten emails at once and flying through it and clicking whatever's asked for, right? It's like we just stop and think about like wait a second, why is this person sending me the email? Why are they? What is this attachment? Did I ask for this? Like no, I didn't. Why you know why are they sending this? And kind of stop and just really like think about it for a sec. Also, when the the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you're like. Mm -hmm. yeah, trust your gut. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Like if it feels off, there's a reason for that. And it sounds really woo-woo, but it's it's really true. It's really true. So slow down. So here are some things to I want you to kind of think about too, right? So oftentimes what's happening is the phishing is coming through emails. So if you're if you have like strong passwords or whatever you're doing, we're gonna talk about some other ways to secure your environment. But think about when an email comes through. So one of the things, check the sender's address. Is this the correct address? We literally, we have spam. Oh, go ahead, Gina. Sorry, I just have to share. So I'm in sales, right? So I'm always multitasking times 20. <laughs> and they send us emails all the time to try to trick us and see if we fall for it. Because we have to go through class after class after class of continuing education about how not to compromise the company's security. So the biggest thing I've ever learned is hover that mouse over that email address that it came from, and, and you can tell right away that it's bogus or spelled wrong or added characters. They're pretty good, though. Like, they'll mm -hmm. make it look real, but two L's and not one or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that was the biggest, the most helpful thing ever. So I don't get in trouble anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't I spam test. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Still they they uh -huh. do like spam tests on us. They like, do. So I get this Funny. too. So emails, yeah. Or it's like, like you get an email from Pat Stone, who is our founder and like chairman. You're like, oh my gosh, like I better get back to this right away. And then I'm like, is Pat Stone sending me the email? And so that's <laughs> the thing is like, if you click on the, you know, the email the person, right. you can see their email address. P-A-T-T. Right, yeah. exactly. It's like yes. P-A-T-T -T or uh -huh. something like that. Or, it's, yeah, you know, it's not at a dub from a W. It's like Pat Stone at, like, some other random yeah. hotmail. You know, hotmail, yeah, yeah, not like a WFG secure address. Mm -hmm. So those are those little things. Yeah, like, check and see who it's coming from. If you if you see those, if you get a, uh, a bad one, is there somewhere you could report it? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, for us, we, we do, but I don't know. Just I don't know. If I would just delete it. I wouldn't try to forward it. I wouldn't try. Yeah. Or just call like, hey, uh, sir, <laughs> did you send an email to me? You know, or yeah, yeah. like if, or it's, if they're the posing it as someone you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, just pick up the phone and call a number that you already know, or if you're if you don't know who the person is or whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. I would just delete it. We can also just Google it and see like you you may want to report you could potentially like report it to like a, a, a fraud. Yeah, no, like fraud. Yeah, get them in trouble. I know, right? I know. Exactly. I don't know where. Um, I don't know. We can look into that, but I would say definitely delete it. Um, is there an attachment or link? in the email. So this is another one. Don't click on attachments from um, unknown sources. Uh, even like our, <laughs> our company is a little, cr um, I don't want to say crazy. I want to say cautious. Like, uh, like our, um, the VP of IT will like, he will always send an email out first saying like, I'm going to be sending you this attachment. So yeah. like they don't even like mess around with, uh, if you don't know an attachment is coming, you don't know what it is. Be, be suspicious of it. Um, and again, if you're not sure, yeah, like you said, just pick well, up the phone. Like also in easy call. I think emails or like Messenger. It's like, mm -hmm. did you? Is this really you, Carrie? Because we're already friends. Yeah. yeah. So why All are you time. friending me? A lot. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Things like that. And have you guys? I've gotten so many more spam. Like somebody's account gets hacked, and they send me an, a link via Messenger. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Facebook Messenger. Yeah. And then they get all your contacts. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. then they're sending. They're like, Lisa, did you mean to? Like, right. we're already friends. Why are you? Yeah. Why are you trying to friend me? So I like if people are sending you links or like the you know the fear based tactic. Like, uh oh, is this you? Like yeah. message Messenger coming through. Mm -hmm. Don't click those links. Don't click those links. Call that person or. You know, yeah. Okay. Um, here's another one. This is another hovering technique. So, say there's a phishing email that comes through, and they want you to go to this specific website. So, what you can do is, if you hover over that website, you'll get to see this the real address that that's going to. So, you can check that out. And then another helpful hint is, if you look at, oh, it doesn't show it right here. Um, if you notice like the dot com or if there's a dot net, whatever is before that dot com or dot net or yeah. dot org, that's where it's really going to. So you could have something at, you know, WFG title dot one two three hacker dot com, you know, and that one two three hacker address is where it's actually going to. So you can kind of pay attention to where where am I sending this information? Um, so use that to help you. Um, oh, there it is. That's what I was trying to say. The true domain. <laughs> um, and then, have you guys come across this one? The emails with the bad grammar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Asking oh, you to wire or send oh, money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So again, just that's like a hair on the back of my neck. Where I'm like, seriously, what kind of grammar is this? Like, this is not. This is off. This is off. Um, and then finally, this is the social engineering I was talking about. If there is a threat. If there's something that is, is designed to make you take a step really quickly, um, you're going to be charged. There's going to be consequences. Be very, very suspicious. Those are, those are going to get you into trouble for sure. Okay. So those are some things to watch out for specifically in email. So it's just training yourself, taking a breath, slowing down. Okay. This is one of those quotes that I think is apt for this. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so next up. So first is to just slow down, take some time, look at what's, you know, the links, who's sending the email. The second one is, as I mentioned, to run a malware scan on your computer. Before you start going in and changing passwords and making all of these, you know, changes, we want to make sure there's no key loggers or more, you know, no software that's already monitoring what you're doing. So these are all different types of malware, just so you guys kind of know. So if you've ever heard of like, you know, ransomware or bots or viruses, that's all, you know, all another word for malware. Yeah. So if you do want to scan and your your computer finds it, then what? I mean, is it up to whatever your protect your software protection? It'll know what to do to get rid of it, like nor um, nor nor like Norton, Norton, Norton Security or, or, or um, McAfee or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you should be supported by those companies. So typically, so 
they should take care of it. They should help you. If you have an internal IT person or like an information security person, they might be able to help you. Husband. <laughs> Your husband, <laughs> husbands are great for <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, husbands are very helpful. Yeah. Um, but but yes, so that should do, and it should. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll at least let you know, and then you can I'll use the it. representative or the resource of that company to help you get it taken off. So the one that I always recommend, if you don't have a scanner, um, if you have something on your computer already, you can use that one. This is the one that our Vice President of Information Technology or IT uses. It's just malwarebytes, B-Y-T-E-S, dot com. They have a free version. Um, you can also upgrade if you'd like, but the free is the one that I have on my computer. And yeah, this is the one he recommends. So this is the one I do. So I want to just pass on that to you guys. Yes, Gina. Sorry, I have to tell you. No, in. please. I'm, I'm great. sorry if you're going to already say this, but again, one of the most important things I learned from all of this is to run this before you change passwords. Right? Yes. So wow. every time you're going to go through and do that, run it first. I thought that was so helpful. That's mm -hmm. super and helpful. And it makes so much sense. Yes. Yes, because if you can't even remember, if you don't remember to do it regularly, I mean, some people mm -hmm. who are like super um, cautious, you know, they are the ones who are running things like daily, weekly, monthly. Like, I'm the person who forgets, and I probably, you know, I just don't yeah. run it regularly. So that, even if you can get into the habit of, yes, yeah. before you make any changes to passwords, run them all yeah. first. That, that would help, for sure. Is it an easy thing to follow? I'm so not. Yeah. I too like, Honestly, like, things take forever and then something <laughs> happens when I'm going through it. So it's so easy. It'll even run in the background here. So you literally just like click your little malware and it says like run scan. So you just go run scan. And it makes things a little bit slower, but it'll be done in like less than five minutes. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Good it's and not then, like an eight hour process. It's so will it tell you if you have like bugs? Mm -hmm. And then what do you do after that? Like So that's when you have to go ahead and reach out to somebody. So depending on who your resources are you could call like an IT person you can like reach out to me we can kind of look at things I think with the free malware scan I don't know that they actually have a, like a help desk that you're like gonna get That's on the phone mm -hmm. my brother squad. does cybersecurity geek squad your oh, brother does call your yeah. brother. oh my gosh call your brother for sure yeah geek squad geek geek squad squad number. yeah he's in DC yeah <laughs> 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 okay we can do the, the face screen how yes. you can like yeah, log on and look at your screen yeah uh -huh. the remote Remote, like remote. My brother told me never to do that, by the way. Oh, really? Even yeah. with him? Well, with him, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> because I know what he looks like. You know, but he said, yeah. Yeah. We do it. We have, like, the yeah, you know, internal, internal IT internal. people that will yeah. do it. But, yeah. I'm so just like, don't call me that we're going. Like, like <laughs> Apple. 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 Yeah. Apple. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to trust anybody after you hear it's all true. this stuff. I know. And I agree. And honestly, like, that kind of that healthy distrust is good, in my opinion. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So running malware first, and then as Gina mentioned, once the malware scan is done and you're clean, that is when you can change your passwords. So this is another thing that we can really do is create strong passwords, okay? What does that mean? Not your birthday. <laughs> what is this? Not, not your birthday. birthday. <laughs> not, not, not your birthday. Your birthday. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not your kids' names. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh -huh. So there are three things to think about that create a strong password. Okay. So they are length, complexity, and variety. So let's kind of talk more about this. Length, complexity, and variety. Length is really the number one important factor, I would say, because the more characters that you have in your password, the harder it's going to get to break, right? So if an eight out, if an eight character password, which is typically kind of the minimum that they'll have you do, can be broken in less than two seconds, we want you to extend that. So I would say use a minimum of 12 characters. Some um, services will let you do upwards almost 32 characters, I think is the max. And I know you're no. looking at me, Carrie, like, are you no. kidding me? Like, I'm not, how am I going to do that? Right? <laughs> I'm always changing my passwords because I have no idea what they are. Like, I know. Shoot. Well, and they make you, you know, the different services, it's like one makes you include a character, or one is like, you can't use the same password over and over again. So now you have these, like, random passwords out there that you don't remember. Um, so we'll talk about the password manager. So length is more important than complexity. Use a minimum of 12 characters. And I'll tell you guys this. Like, I'll, sh I'll share. Well, I'll keep going first. Okay. So, so you have to have a long password, right? So then the question then becomes, okay, like how, what should my password be? Like how can I create something that, that's that long? 
the idea I always recommend is rather than having like a word, think about using a sentence or even like a song Ooh. lyric. Like uh -huh. if you could think about that's something for easy yeah. for you to remember, maybe a song that's really meaningful for you and nobody else knows, that you can use a sentence, right? A lyric from. Um, or something like a, a motivational phrase that you love, or whatever that might be, right? So think about that to kind of create some link. From there, you want to go complexity. So if I'm going to create a, a song lyric, maybe like Don't Stop Believing, or I Am a Child of the 80s, what you want to do is add complexity, meaning you want to add some upper characters and some lowercase characters. You want to add symbols, numbers, because you want to mix it up, right? So how are some of the ways that you can do that? Well, you can add, like in place of a, an O or an I or like an E, you can add a number. So like instead of a, the letter O, you can use a zero, or instead of the I, you can use an exclamation point. Those are some ways to do that. Um, you can capitalize know, right? <laughs> the beginnings of certain words. You know, I like to use a little energy, put an exclamation mark in there every once in a while. You can punctuate between the words with a character, like I period, and period, a uh, period, you know, something like that. So anything that you can do to create a little bit of complexity in there is, is a great thing to do. Okay. And then we come to variety. That whole idea of not using that same password over and over again. And I get it, you guys. This is the toughest one because there are so many different passwords um, to remember and it's a big pain in the butt. And so the way around this is to be able to store your passwords in, in such a place where you don't have to remember them, but it's a secure environment and a place where you know that, that you can easily access. So you get to determine what that is going to be for you, right? Um, but what I would recommend is to use something called a password manager. Whoa, how do I go back? Wait, can you go back to that? Yeah. Sorry, so there you go. Variety, this one. So, like every time I want to log in to US Bank, I should change my password? No, sorry. So, no. saying you have a password, a username uh, and password for US Bank. Yes. You have a different one for Chase. Yes. You have a different one for Gmail. Yes. Mm. Different one for Facebook. Got it. Okay. So, just the different accounts that you have, you're okay, not using it. like the same password for every single one. Because I know that's what makes it easy to remember, right? It's like you've got your password <laughs> that you use in every single account. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I've been guilty of it too. And you guys, so okay, can you turn off the screen? So I'll tell a quick story. So I, I'm not proud of this story. Don't listen, Skip. You'd be so mad at me. For <laughs> <laughs> I I had a password assigned to me in college to like log into. Back when email was young, and we had to like get into our email account, I just had this password assigned to me, and it was an eight-character password. And you guys, I've literally used that password like since college for most of my accounts, mm -hmm. and I'm blessed, like lucky, because I haven't had anything hacked. But I was looking at this, so there's this, there's different websites now you can go to to kind of see how long it would take a good hacker to crack your password. My password that I was using all these years. Which password? What? <laughs> it wasn't just password. Or one, two, three, four. Precise. <laughs> um, no, it was. It could be hacked in 0. 0.2 seconds. Wow. I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, I changed that pretty immediately after that. But um, yeah. So <laughs> so here's something to kind of to think about. If you guys want to use any of these you can um, I use this how secure is my password dot net um, these will tell you how secure your passwords are so as you go through and you're starting to think of different passwords here are some ones that you can you know you can use so so think about this right I love my kids it's got a little bit length but that password could be cracked in like 20 less than 22 hours wow yeah not not so secure right but, and we're, get, we're assuming 100 trillion guesses per second, because that's what these software programs can do. So think about this. This is what's ring, this is kind of like mine. <laughs> ring 1999, 2.22 seconds, that could be hacked. So, but the more you can see, like the, the harder it gets, right? Like 
blue dash ring eight cow and prism. I don't know what that is, but that maybe means something to somebody. Uh, would be trillion centuries. One, <laughs> yeah, point twenty one trillion centuries. So that's pretty secure. Uh, uh -huh. that was, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, so this is kind of what shows you, right? The complexity. So if you want to play around and see how secure your password is, go ahead and go to one of those websites. It's pretty illuminating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it seems like most sites now, when you're creating a password, will tell you how yeah, strong, strong the password or is. Or, or they'll yeah. say, use a password you haven't used the last time. Yeah. 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 Right. And I'm logging in. I'm like, <laughs> I got nothing. I can't remember. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. So yeah. I'm going to do like Carrie Blum, one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> That's that you yeah. <laughs> I love it. There's a lot of times on my computer, because with a Mac, Mm -hmm. It'll say, you know, uh, here's a suggested strong yeah. password. Oh. How secure is yeah. that? Yeah. Right, when they're giving like, you one. Yeah, yeah. it's your Safari, and it's 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 fr fairly lengthy, but I don't trust it. Mm -hmm. is somebody then, if they're spying on you, they're finding that, or is it just keystrokes that they're figuring out? Well, I would make sure that you've done your malware soft, you've done your malware scan first. Mm -hmm. Did you say it's really secure? Yeah, I mean, well, the password itself is Safari secure. will generate yeah. a very uh, secure password. Obviously, if somebody's already spying on your yeah. computer and stealing keystrokes, yeah. it doesn't matter. If well, you, you don't yeah. have those passwords. You don't use keystrokes because yeah. it generates yeah. it for you, and you just say yes. Yeah. So you never get a keystroke. Oh. But you still have to log in at some point. You'll you'll. To any no, because it just it just it just suggests it. If it you save says, it, if yeah. you save it, it just saves it for you. And you oh, should you do that though? Should you I save? I would not want to do that. I would not want to save that. Because uh, mm -hmm. then it's already there. Yeah. 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 Right. Then Somebody know. already knows it. If I trust anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like the idea. I like like you said. Like I'm sure the password itself is secure. I get nervous if it's like if it's something that's like coming out from the internet saying, hey, like this yeah. is this is a secure password. I can check on that. I, I it's would say through, it's through Safari. It's through I would Max. Like, yeah. It's it's one of Apple's feature that, that when you Safari when you go to a new website, Safari it's a setting actually. Okay. You want Safari to recommend passwords. And if and what it does is it gives you a very secure okay. password that's up there. The question that's coming is does Apple then know that password, which Apple claims they do not. I mean, but Apple, it's an right, right, right. but Apple, <laughs> Apple will claim that they do not keep <laughs> track of that password. With that, but within iCloud, you you are all if you're not having to type it every time, you're saving all your passwords into iCloud so that they can go across different devices and everything. Mm -hmm. So if you go from this Mac to that Mac and log in with your iCloud account with your mm -hmm. Apple account, then your passwords are saved through iCloud and will come into any website. Mm -hmm. So they are out there on the cloud, but it's Apple's secure cloud. Security. So yeah, I mean, and it's, it's the same idea, right? Like, so healthy distrust is good, but then you have to sort of, you have to trust certain service. There's got to be, right? So like, whether it's Apple, who should be very secure, but you know, if, Af if Apple gets hacked, then, you know, then you have that. Like, there are password managers too, like one password, for example. Same idea, like they are supposed to be very secure, so they're helping you to, similar, like auto-generate passwords, they're storing your passwords for you just like they would in iCloud or something like that, but the security is supposed to be su such that even if they're hacked, you're not gonna get, you know, they're not gonna get access to your stuff. So, um, so yeah, the philosophy is there. I mean, at some point it's kind of like select who you who you trust, whether it's the, you know, the, the Apple, the one password, the whatever. Um, so taking it I'm going to ask my IT person, though. Do you mind? I'll be no, an exchange no, cards afterwards. Great. Well, it's funny because my husband actually has a password keeper. Okay. But it's totally old. It's just a device. Mm -hmm. And all his passwords are there <gasps> so that it's never connected to the Internet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you go. How do people get access? Does, do you have, do you they have, have to have, have a have password device. to have You have device? that one password for your device there, and then you can type everything else in there. So there's the inconvenience of it. But... Mm -hmm. But that's kind that's of like. How he likes to do it. So that's but I like it. it. I kind of like it because yeah. it, as long as it's like something you have to actually access. Let's see somebody. That's like one of yours. Right. I got it. 
Correct. This one is password protected mm -hmm. already. Yeah. And there's just yeah, I need a place to put all my stuff. I'm so yeah. like, yeah. That's where I know it's like, same thing. I've done all the, the things wrong too, you guys. Like I have like an Excel spreadsheet on my computer. I had it <laughs> saved under like a secret name. So <laughs> somebody wouldn't necessarily know that it was password, but same thing. Like it was like somebody could easily access that, right? So so it's having it to, in a secure environment would be the thing. So whether that is, and that actually will come into play. We're gonna talk about multi-factor authentication, which is essentially what, what that is, right? Having a separate device. So let's actually, that's a perfect segue. Let's move on to that. Karen, so, did you have a question? It was oh, just sorry, another level of distrust. So the hackers are actually employed by these people that are supposed to have all this mm. secure for like Apple or the password people. And I mean, that's just going way beyond what you could even. I mean, ha if a hacker is employed by one of those. Yeah. It is, but it's very, yeah. very it's, rare that yeah. we hear the big companies, Apple, Microsoft, actually being hacked. Those, those companies themselves. And you're right, at some point, you got to decide, do I trust this company that's a multi-billion dollar company? Do I trust this other software company to keep my passwords? But at some point, you still have to work on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, ha you have to trust somebody, yeah. to, or Norton, or McAfee, all of these people who <coughs> are giving access to our PCs. Right. Yeah. yeah, you're right. And, you know, I think it's, it's interesting, too, like the hackers, like they're smart. I don't know, maybe Apple, but like the what they're trying to oftentimes hack into are places with lots of information or a lot of money. So like that's why, you know, real estate transactions are typically an easy target because it's big money and people who don't have high security, mm -hmm. right? Whereas like you're trying to hack Apple, like you've got a task in front of you, right? right. So it's not it's not a perfect right. thing by right. any means. I mean, it's not to say they'll never be hacked, but yeah. Actually, I'll just say one other thing real quick. Apple, I don't know if any of you saw it last night. Apple just put out a new commercial on the iPhone saying, we have more information on our iPhones than we do in our house. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's, they're talking about the security of their new operating system. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so slowing down, watching, doing a malware scan, making your passwords more secure, and then the fourth thing you can do is use multi-factor authentication, also called two-step authentication, or two-step, two-step verification, two-step for short. Essentially what this is, is it's a, it's a means of security basically, where you have to provide more than one type of uh, identification to prove your identity, right? So basically, and what that are is it has to be two of three things. That's why they call it two-step or multi-factor. So they're gonna ask you for two of the three things, something that you know, something you have, and something you are. So think about this, so something you know. That would be the first thing. That's like a password that you're entering in or a PIN number that you're entering in to access your account, right? So something that you know. Something that you have would be a second form. So say you enter your username and password into your account. Well, then if you guys have ever gotten something where you get a text verification yes. mm -hmm. on your phone, yeah, that is a form of two-step authentication. It's sending that text message to something you have, mm -hmm. which is a totally different thing. If someone's a hacker trying to you know, access their pass your password, they get that. They don't have your they cell phone, have phone, right? So they don't get that text message. So that's it's an additional layer of security, if that makes sense. So something you have is like a phone, a text verification code, um, and then or something you have would be an example of your your husband's little mm -hmm. um, his uh, his thing, right? Um, and then something that you are that would be something affiliated with your person. So this is like you know your when you log into your phone and it does your little facial recognition scan or like voice recognition or fingerprint or something like that, something on your body. But basically, you have to enter two of the three things in some form in order to gain access. So that's what two-step is. And what's, what's interesting, um, so it gives you that added level of security, and it's, yeah, if, 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 even if someone hacks your, your account, they can't get access to your stuff because they don't have that second form of security. So the con, the con, those are the pros. The cons are that basically, um, it, it can be a little bit more time consuming and um, sometimes you might need a, a third party application might need an app password, which we're not gonna go over. But 
The good news is a lot of the, the services that we use today, you can actually set up two-step verification. It's not what they default to, but again, to be cautious, you can totally do that. So even on your, I have two steps set up on my Facebook and Instagram accounts. I've seen one too many Facebook accounts get hacked to mm -hmm. not want to do that, right? Um, so all it is is if I, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so so that way, you know, even if they, they hack your account, they have to do the, it sends a text verification code to my phone. So to, if I ever change my password or anything on my Facebook account, my Instagram account too, it's sending me a, a verification. You can do it on things like DocuSign and Dropbox and zip forms now, PayPal. So this is something where you may have to dig a little bit. Like I said, it's not the default, but typically in settings somewhere you could set up like privacy security, something like that. That's where you can typically set up that, that two-step verification. So if that's something that you want to do and you want help with, definitely let me know. Can you explain yeah. third-party applications may need an app password? Would it um, so this is something, this is honestly a little bit over my technical knowledge too, but to me, what it is, is like, for example, in Outlook, mm -hmm. you can set up a um, two-step verification, but it's not, it's not built into the way <coughs> Outlook, Outlook works. So there's like a like code and app password that you'd have to get access to, to actually go in and like make the change. Got it. So it's a little complex. Okay. Typically, oh, then la 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 la. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Move on. Never mind. Let's Let's moving right along. Not Move on. Not had enough coffee. Right. 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 So don't worry. The good news is, go in. Most of them, it'll be settings. Like you can go into settings and and add two step in in multiple accounts. So think about what are the processes that you work in, whether it's zip forums or whatever that might be, right? Okay, so that was the fourth one. Use two steps, set it up. I recommend that added level of security. And then number five, this is what we've kind of been alluding to, and that is using a password manager. So it's kind of cool to know that like Safari is doing things like this now too. So it's, it's not something that you actually have to pay for. Um, with a password manager, typically, there is a little bit of an investment, but it's a couple bucks a month, so it's highly worth it. The goal or the, the great thing about password managers is that basically you only have to literally remember one password. So you're logging in. I have one that's called one password. And so what happens is I go to, I have to log into my one password when I get into my device. So if I'm working on my laptop, I log in and then that one password will basically autofill. Say I go to a you know Wells Fargo or I go into my whatever other account, my Gmail. It'll just log in. The one password will autofill the password for me, and I can log in that way. So basically, I'm not remembering anything. Like our and and even more so in these types of, of password managers, they will generate passwords for you that are super secure, so you don't have to remember them. Our um, VP of IT. Um, he doesn't even know what his passwords are. He uses one password and he just goes in and auto generates them. He's like, somebody could hold a gun to my head and I wouldn't be able to like give them my password. I'm like, okay, then you're gonna die. Uh, <laughs> right, but, <laughs> right? but he's gotten it so much to the system where he doesn't even worry about generating pa his password. He goes into his one password, he will like any new account, he generates the, new, the auto password and it fills them in for him. So it's a great way, again, for you to not have to remember passwords. The rub, right, the con is it's training yourself to go in and use it rather than, because if you've already been trained to like auto save your password into your, you know, your Gmail and all of those others, you want to kind of wipe those away and, and train yourself to just go in through the one password. So it can be a little bit of a slow, just like change of any kind, you know what I mean? It's like, um, it's just a process to learn how to do it first, but it can be very well worth it. So, so I I'm assuming okay. those are, because you're doing one password to get all your passwords. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it's like if somebody gets that one password, then they have all your accounts. Yes, so, so it's the same argument, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, because they are, they have high security, they say that even if somebody were to be able to hack, that they have all these encryption mechanisms for your password, so they shouldn't be able to even access okay. them. My VP of IT Guaranteed, right? I mean, nobody guarantee, 100% guarantees, but they say yeah. as, as secure as they can be. Like yeah. the point being, again, you, you have to have a little bit of trust. So for you, what, you know, who, who are you willing to trust? Mm -hmm. I, you know, my, our VP of IT is a very 
cautious individual and he loves one password so he he trusts it and i'm like okay i i trust what you trust <laughs> so that's and, and yeah so you can do like singles teams family accounts whatever you want to do so um if you're using one password that's for your computer mm -hmm. and then you can use it on your other devices as yes well. so yes so it will work for all your devices everything. yes okay. exactly all devices all accounts all of your devices, all your accounts. So yeah, my 1Password works on my phone, it works on my computer, as long as it's the same account. Yeah, does that make sense? So for, well, I guess I'll research it, but for family, how does that work? For family, I believe you're, you're paying for multiple devices, like multiple accounts, basically. Mm -hmm. um, same thing like with the team, it's multiple accounts. So like I would have one, I would have my 1Password that I use, which is my song lyric to log, log into my 1Password account. If you have like your husband who has his different accounts with different usernames, it's like multiple accounts. Okay. Um. So basically, how? Just yes. I'm sorry, I'm like a little okay. slow today. No, 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 no. But when you're, and I, I'm sure when I read about it, I'll figure it out. But when, when you're going into onepassword.com, you're putting all your passwords in for all your accounts. It generates a one password. Yes. To use and then you just well, you have to go into all your accounts to do it then? You have to set it up. So basically what happens is you would log into so it's actually on your computer it's on your device. So like I go onto my computer and I would log into my one password. Mm -hmm. And then what I have to do is I, I have to build up my account, right? So I have to through one password add my my um, what I, like a Chase account or my, you know, retirement account and like all of my, you're kind of telling one password like for this, for this URL, this, like this service, Chase.com, mm -hmm. this is my password or it, it, it generates it for you. So you have like a data bank within it, you're telling it your password. Mm -hmm. And actually when you get into the practice of logging in to your one password, like when you go into your computer and you log into one password, if you go to a different website, like if I go to Citibank.com or something, and I and I go to log into Citibank, it'll say like use your one password password, and so you can say yes. And they'll say, do you want, want me to save this into into your one password? So it kind of helps you. So if you don't have one, they'll create one for you. Mm -hmm. So basically, for all of our, you know, banks school IDs stuff like that, you have to know that to build your one password.com. You or, do. or, or it will give you, like, you know, forget lisasnyder.com 536. We're going to give you blank for U.S. Bank. Yes. So what you could do is if you want to store already, so like the way my boyfriend uses it is he just, he doesn't want to remember his password. So if you already have an existing password mm -hmm. and you just now want to get it into one password, so it's, it's managing it for you, mm -hmm. um, then you can do that. So it can already be what exists. Okay. But if it's an and or, right, if you want to change that and say, actually, I want to have one password, like I want to change my password and have one password created for me, you can do it that way. It okay. will. Or if it's a brand new account where you're creating a brand new password, if you go to one password to, to log in, it'll say it can generate it for you. So okay. to start and then you're, you know. But then you have to go back and start. change it on your app. It's going to take time, I think. Yeah. It does. Yeah. That's yeah. Kind of confusing. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. it is confusing. So this is where you guys, if it's something that you like really wanted to do and you don't feel like you're a, you know, a tech savvy kind of person, like I would be more than happy to sit down with you and walk through setting up one password because I get it how hard, you know, how how hard it can be. It's not hard. It's just taking the time and kind of going through it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it does. It's like a setup. It takes a little bit of time to do it, and then it takes a little bit of management, meaning, you know, as I said, like, it's a new habit as you, you have to get used to, like, going into 1Password first, and if you need to update your password on one on a site, it's like, don't update it on the site. Go into my 1Password and do it. So it, it's a little bit of a retraining, but again, it's, it's just so worth it. And you haven't heard any issues with hackers getting into that? I haven't. Okay. I haven't. Again, like how, I said. how does that work with the two-step verification? So with the two-step verification, good question, good question. So it would still, same thing would apply. So you would, like if I, in my Facebook account, I'll just use yeah. that as an example, I can log in my 1Password, mm -hmm. or go to Facebook, yeah. and then log in using 1Password. Mm -hmm. But then still, because I've set up multi-factor or, multi or two-step, even if I change my password or like log in, mm -hmm. It's still going to send me a text verification okay. code. 
Yeah. So it just goes right to the next step. Yes. Okay. The two steps are still yeah. happening. Yeah. You're just using a, like a different, uh, not step, I shouldn't, like a different process for the, yeah. the password piece. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The real okay. advantage of the password maker, the companies that are doing this is they put out these ultra secure passwords so you don't have to think about them and then they store them. So it really is. It just makes it very easy for thirty, sixty dollars a year, depending on what you're doing, yeah. mm -hmm. to have different passwords for every single account mm -hmm. that are very, very secure passwords, and you have one place that you go. Okay. So it's really once you save them in your password manager, yeah. it's just as easy. Right now, you're saving them in your browser. Yeah. yeah. And let yeah. or or you get to a point knowing, okay, every time I go to this website, I'm going to type my password, yeah. which most of us don't want to do. That's what what about keychain? No. I've never used that well, before. Key is that the part same Apple. thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. App, keychain is the part is the program that Apple uses to store passwords. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it'd be just yeah. a secure. And it's just a secure password okay. storage. Okay. Yeah. So I've that never was used it, Apple but device. I wondered about that. Cool. But if you have, like, I have an iPhone, but I use a regular version of the Mac at home. But it's still being stored within. Uh, when you store passwords on your iPhone. It's the same thing. Apple is still using a product that they call Keychain within iCloud to store those passwords. And, and, and they don't have to have and, another yeah. Apple product. And then what Apple does is it matches it up with your, you can match it up with your facial recognition as well. Saying, so when you go to Amazon on your iPhone to buy something, you can now, it used to be through thumbprint, but Apple right. does it now through facial recognition. And if you allow that, then it sees your facial recognition, and then you just double tap on the side to to allow it yeah, to take that password. And so, okay, but on my desktop at home, it's not a Mac. No, it's not those, yeah. It, I couldn't use it there. I use Google. Yes, yeah, so a lot of us who use PC at home and Apple phone, we use, mm -hmm. I use Google Chrome as my browser, yes, and okay. that way it goes cross-platform between oh, okay. Windows and Mac. Google is a, a cross-platform device. Okay. okay. Whereas okay. Apple, uh, Apple uses Safari, Windows uses Explorer, I like Chrome because it's really a little more cross platform. Okay, so that's nice. Or just buy a Mac. Or just buy a Mac. I had a keeper for like my whole life. When I got my license almost <laughs> three years ago, I was like, I feel like I have to get a Mac for real estate. It will help you. And it's been, I mean, I'm old for this nonsense. Uh huh, that's it. how I feel. That's how I feel. <laughs> I was like, too much. I, what, just when you get it down, something else. Something, something else. else down. Down. It's true. It's true. I feel you. It's true. <laughs> well, anything's hackable, but that's one thing that Apple really touts is their security and that they do set things up if people use them. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. and I'll be honest, I've been just as guilty on my Mac of going and creating my own passwords for things too. Not but you can also go to set up an appointment at the Genius Bar and they are painfully yeah. patient. Like they see me yeah. coming they're like, <laughs> yeah, I don't want her at 2 o'clock. They so literally like flip that. a coin to avoid me because I'm, I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like I thought I, I would, saw a picture of you in the office. I mean, I, j I don't, and it's painful, and I don't mind admitting it. But I mean, I'd rather write a 5,000 word thesis than have to, I just, I don't. It's a painful thing, but, but that's great. See the yeah. resources, though, right? Have the genius bars and the people that can help you. Yeah. So, okay, you guys. Well, this is. Thank you all for contributing thank and sharing you. today. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Yes. So, couple quick closing thoughts, of course. So, in summary, slow down. Don't use those free open networks in your local coffee shop. Use your hotspot instead. Um, Know where the URLs and email addresses are taking you. Know where the URL is before you click on it. Know what the attachment is before you click on it. Use set up two step on different services where you want that added level of security. Think about using a password manager, creating strong passwords, your keychain if you're a Mac user. Um, don't use the same password. And then I didn't really reference this, but backup. Like if you can back up your data, that's always really useful. Um, but those are the things to think about. It sounds, probably seems like a lot, but like just pick pick one or two to start with, right? If you just want to get a password manager, great. If you just want to go through and um, you know try to set up two step on things, great. Like those those small steps will actually, you know, one step is going to improve things better than where they are now. 
So just remember, you know, you are the first line of defense for yourself, for your clients, for the industry. So, so thank you for being here, and I hope that this was helpful, and I hope that you can take this information and apply it to yourself, share it with your clients. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the coals. And so here's the next step. So what I would like, if you guys want this information, I know you were kind of taking photos and stuff, but if this is useful, if you want a copy, like a PDF of the presentation, I'm more than happy to send it out. Um, just let me know on the feedback form. So a couple closing things. So as we mentioned, this is a CE credited course, so you guys get two CE credits for being here, so yay for that. So I'm gonna pass out a little quiz, and then if you wanna just complete that, bring it back up to me, and then I'll give you the completed form. And then one thing I would like to ask of you, is we have a feedback form. I'm always curious to know how you liked the class, if it was helpful, what you liked about it, what could have been improved, and what else would be helpful for you to get. You know, if we were to bring more classes here, what do you want to learn about? You know, what would be helpful for you? Um, so if you don't mind filling that out for me, and then if you want to meet individually, um, it could be to go over today's stuff if we want to set up a password manager, if you want to, or if, you know, marketing technology stuff, if it's to help you with Facebook, if it's to help with any of that stuff, um, I am, that's what I'm here for, and we would love to help you out. So just circle yes, and then if you want the presentation from today, somewhere on this feedback form, just put like, you know, yes. <laughs> yes, your send presentation. Because a lot of people say yes and then no name, uh -huh. no email. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if it doesn't come your way, that's probably why. So yes, please do that. Make sure we've got your contact information if you want that PDF. Is this an open book quiz? Wink, wink. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Dis group discussion. I like that. That's how you learn the best. Exactly. So just put your name I and date on here. Go ahead and just take one and pass it around. There. So if we want to want them to fill out their information, okay. and I'll take it, you, and you can sign it, and I'll make copies. Perfect. Should you I pass this out now? Yep. Okay. And if Please. we want to use you as so title, you where, oh, where's Lisa. your office? Oh, I love you, Lisa. <laughs> I'm just Oh, saying. my gosh. So I would be your sales <laughs> rep, and I did bring cards. Okay. Um, and I like to take a closer for you. We're right behind you, literally, in your backyard. Oh, awesome. The building behind you. We have a beautiful new office. Uh, we're quite the team. We would love to have you. Carrie will give me a yes, reference. Yes, please use that. <laughs> I have, I've had the, the best way to know is when you have issues and they come through for you. Oh, so you. they've always been there for me. And thank they didn't pay you. me to say this. You know? <laughs> no? Yes. Thank you. Do you want to check on this? I love that. Okay, I'll thank with you. you. Yeah, please. I'd love to talk to you and thank you. Talk to you. Sure, thank you.